In class, it's not so bad. But when school's out and the others go off to enjoy themselves, well, if you're what they call a shy guy, that's when you really feel it. The loneliness of being new in town. You don't know how to make people like you, and you find yourself holding a grudge against them. You're standing on the outside looking in. You might have something to contribute to their conversation, but nobody cares whether you do or not. There's a barrier, and you don't know how to begin breaking it down. You imagine they keep watching the way you look, the way you act. They think you're different. So, you head for home. What else? But still, you can't forget that you're alone, an outsider. Hello, Phil. How's everything? Oh, okay, I guess, Dad. Your record transmitter and microphone coming. Oh, all right, I guess. I know it isn't either. I can't figure out where to connect in the oscillator. I know I have to connect it into the amplifier, but where? It just doesn't fit in. Why not the store and get more information? And by the way, how are things going in school? Oh, okay, Dad. But school here isn't like it was back in Morristown. Well, you know, son, maybe school is like your radio. This oscillator will do its work well. But as you said, you still have to fit it in so it can work with all the other parts. I know what you're driving at, Dad, but I don't think I ever will fit in. Not here. I'm different from the guys in this town. Well, as far as that goes, Phil, everybody's different. That's what makes people interesting. Maybe. You know, when we moved here this summer, I had quite a time making friends in a new office where everybody else knew each other. What'd you do, Dad? Well, that's beside the point, son. What works for one doesn't necessarily work for another. But I bet the other men didn't look at your clothes all the time. Well, what makes you think they look at your clothes? Oh, because the other fellas wear sweaters or just shirts. Not a regular suit like mine. Well, wear a sweater then. But clothes alone won't... Phil, what about the other fellows? What do they do? What do they like? Gosh, Dad, I don't know. I never noticed. Only I know it's not radios. Perhaps that's the reason you don't know. You don't notice what the others are interested in. Why not try to find out? How, Dad? Well, you might try watching, listening. Pick out the most popular boys and girls in school and keep an eye on them. Try to figure out why people like them. Not that you'll ever be just like any of them, but you might learn something. Well, see you there. Well, there's an idea. Maybe a good idea. Worth a try anyway. And tomorrow's not too soon to start. Pick out the most popular boys and girls in school and keep an eye on them. Who are they now? Some of them are right here in this class. Andy McIntyre, for instance. People like him, all right. Chick Gallagher rates high in popularity, too. There's Jane Davenport. She's popular with boys and girls. And Jack Gilbert. What's he got that makes people like him so much? Andy's got something to say and Jack's listening. He really seems interested. Come to think of it, Jack's always interested in what people are talking about. Maybe that's why he hits it off so well with everybody. Anyhow, Andy thinks he's a great guy. No, that's too easy, just listening. But what's this? Sounds like Jane's caught on to the same thing. She's listening. Hearing about Helen's collection of menus. And liking it. That makes her kingpin with Helen. Maybe there is something in this business of being a good listener. But still... There must be more to getting along with people than just wearing a sweater and listening.
What's the matter, Bob? Handle stuck? Yeah, I can't get it open. Oh, here, let me try. It's a trick to some of these. There. Gee, thanks a lot, Chick. Now, why didn't you think of that? Chick's always doing things for people. And it pays off in friends. Boy, that sure is one tough history of sound we have for Friday. Wish I could find some good outside reading material. I found a swell book that covers everything Miss Carson wants us to know. It's called The uh, Last Days of Monarchism by Henry Darrow. You can get it at the library. I'm sure glad you told me about it. I'll get it this afternoon. Thanks a lot, Bob. It's okay, Chick. You dope. You knew about that book. You could have been the guy that helped the guy. There it is again. Even when you bump into people, they hardly know you're alive. Big <laughs> you're alone, bud. Alone in the crowd. But keep looking around. Try to find out what the score is. Look at Jack and Beezy over there. Girls seem to like them. Why? What's the angle? They do act kind of polite. At least they seat the girls and give their orders to the waiter. They aren't loud like some of the guys. Cherry Coke, chocolate Coke, milkshake, and mullet. Double chocolate and mullet. Okay, I do. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Choose it, please. I've got the orders for my table. Uh, just help me out during rush hour, Bob. Gee, thanks a lot, Chick. That's swell. Okay, Bob. Hey, girl. There's Chick being helpful again. I can't quite decide. Why don't you have two white striped vegetables, Jane? I love the way it's made. Hey, don't tell me you two are still talking clothes. Was this a plot to squelch all males present? <laughs> Phil, sit down. Make yourself at home. Oh, Chick, are you? Pretty good. Come on, come on. Come on, everybody. Okay. We men need some support to run down this girly's chatter. Hey, you want them all, don't you? Yo, Bob. The topic of our discussion is the mixer next Friday night at school. You're going, aren't you? I don't know, Chick. Uh, I haven't got a date yet. Well, grab yourself a girl and come along. It's not going to be a real party. Just the class getting together for some fun. I'd like to, Chick. Yeah, I sure would.